Hey, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with a two inch brush and a beautiful soft blue gray color. And this is going to be a very interesting sky. So we'll start here at the top and drop in a very small amount of this blue. Maybe a bit right there, up here somewhere. Mostly just across the top. There we go, that's probably enough. And maybe reload and maybe throw a little down here. There we go. Next with our filbert brush and a nice little bit of white. <laughs> let's go ahead and just, let's drop in some clouds up here. Some beautiful soft white areas to the clouds, the highlight. There we go. And you see I'm just allowing this color to blend down and there's very little paint, of course, because this doesn't work if you put a lot of paint down. There, and I'm pretty much just blending with the, with the filbert. We may come back with a bigger brush or we may not, we'll figure it out later. Just depends. Added a touch of pink just to change it up slightly. Not much, just enough to give it a little warmth there in the center. And most of the sky, or the top at least, is gonna be these beautiful, soft, fluffy clouds. Nice. Take them right off the top there. These are big today. They look very, very windswept. Now, as you can see, I've done our normal sketch on the canvas. So now I'll take a, take a two inch brush and I'm just gonna take some of the color that I've already applied. I did this with the filbert. I'm gonna just brush it around. I may need to put a little more on the canvas and that's fine, but I do wanna do it very slowly and very carefully because today we're gonna have a very detailed mountain. Something that's very beautiful and although it's far away, I want a lot of detail. A lot of beautiful colors and rocks and snow areas. So kind of just gently sweep over the top. That'll soften it. So I'm going to be careful not to get too much paint. In fact, that's okay if some of the background shows through. I'm not going to hurt it. There. Just do your best to cover up the white of the canvas. And then you pretty much have a successful background. Use as little paint as possible here. Now with our three quarter brush and a nice soft blue gray color, I'm gonna go ahead and, and work on some, some shadow areas here. Now there's a couple ways to make a blue gray. You can use white, blue, and a tiniest speck of red, not enough to turn it purple, but it kind of turns it a bit of a gray. That works. Or, or you can simply add a little bit of black. The black will make it kind of a little bit cold and a little bit more gray, of course, because it's black. So that's what I decided to do today. Got a little bit of blue, white, a speck of black. And I'm using a three quarter brush. You could use the knife, but I think it's too far away for that. You can still get a lot of detail with this brush. Just use the corner and shape your mountain. Use the angle of the brush strokes to create the, the shape because there's gonna be very little highlight. In fact, maybe none on this back mountain here. Very, very little. There, I just set a tiniest touch of white out on there just to change it, but not really, not really a highlight so much. We'll have a highlight on that one for sure. There. Remember, you can put in dark rocks and things if you need to, to separate some areas. Because a dark rock really helps to, to provide contrast. With a three quarter inch brush, I'll just load up the same blue, and white, and touch of black and just load a little bit on each side. And also I threw some trees in here. The reason is because it would be very, very silly to paint in the entire mountain only to cover up half of it with trees. And I knew I wanted these big old birch trees. Also, this way, if I have these, they're very, very faint sketches, but if, as long as I have those in there, I won't be tempted to skip the birch trees. <laughs> I might fall in love with this mountain and, and not put in the birch trees, which would be okay if you're painting at home, but I wanna show you something that's very different. I wanna show you a very close birch forest than with this mountain in the background. So to keep with that, they just decided it would be best to throw in a sketch and figure out exactly where we're going. And that way we won't waste a lot of time painting in a mountain. You can go right over the sketch, that doesn't make any difference. I just don't wanna put much time in that spot. There we go. And we're just gonna use the same old, 
ideas over there. The difference is we'll just put more time into this one, make it more detailed, and we will have highlight on that side. Now with our two inch brush and some brown, maybe a little bit of both yellows and some red, let's come over here and maybe drop in a bit of a soft rolling foothill sort of a thing back here. And again, I don't care about the trees, but look how important it was that I stuck them in there because, wow, <laughs> we would have had about half that mountain removed. Would have been a big waste of time because it's not easy to get every little crack and bump in there exactly how you want it. There's always something, you know. You paint in a brush stroke, you step back, you take a look at it and see if you like it. There's always something that stands out. So you go back and you change it until you're happy. But that takes time, so I didn't want to didn't want to go throughout the whole painting, the whole mountain doing that, only to cover half of it up. I changed a little bit of red in here just to give it a, a different feel. A little black in here. There we go. Maybe this valley catches a lot of sunlight, so we'll have, it'll have trees. We can see the top of trees. And there won't be so much snow. And that'll give us a great effect, I think. And then maybe in the foreground we'll have snow. We'll just see how it all goes. Next, let's go ahead and drop on some beautiful little tree highlights back here. That's basically all this is, some very distant trees. and Oh, it's beautiful. These are autumn colors. And I just, I really think this will warm up the painting. Like I said, for some reason, this little mountainside, this little meadow or hill back here, catches a little bit better light. It's a little warmer there than in some of the other areas in this valley. So that's why, that's why we have not so much snow here. There's probably a little snow on the ground, but all we see are the top of the trees. So we're not worried about what's on the ground over here. There, I like it. Now with the three quarter brush, I'm just gonna block in some beautiful shadow areas here. You see, I'm just using a a nice soft blue color and I'm adding them in over this white underpainting I just put down. And there's so little paint on here that I could probably paint well, three or four highlights before this got too slippery. So keep that in mind when you paint. Really limit the amount of paint and you'll have such a better experience. And you could throw a little bit of this color back up in those trees as well to make it look like there's just a touch of snow sitting out there because it's so snowy here. We need some back there as well. Now with our three quarter brush, I'm just going to begin to highlight these beautiful birch trees out here. I'm putting the highlight on the right side, of course, because both the shadows and the mountain tell us that that's exactly where the light's coming from. It's a very interesting, interesting painting. I don't think we've ever done birch forest quite like this. So I'm really excited to show you. Be very careful and touch lightly so that you, you almost get that breaking texture like you do in a mountain if you paint it with a knife. You want that same texture out here. So touch lightly. Allow the grain of the canvas to show in the bark. It'll make it look just that much more detailed. Now let's go ahead and drop in these beautiful dark areas that the birch trees have. I guess this is where the bark is peeling off, something like that. Not a birch tree expert, but they sure are pretty. So if you don't know exactly how they're shaped or what they look like, grab a photo or two and just familiar, familiarize yourself with the tree. It's not at all difficult to do, but when you paint them this close, you do have to have a generic idea of how they should look. There. You can do all sorts of amazing details. Since they're this close, you, can, you can't over detail this a couple of these close ones as much as you do. It'll be great. Now these back ones, we don't want to go overboard on them because that would bring them too close. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.